Right, I'm down on the coast with the main man, John, from the fish locker. Um, and we're about to, well, I'll just tell you, the weather took a turn for the worst and I was like, I was messaging John saying, I'll oh, let's sack this off, but local knowledge prevails. And look what he's found us, look. A beautiful little spot as that cormorant just flies by. And we're going to saddle up with our spearfishing gear. John's going to try and take me to get some... Anything. Anything, we'll take anything. And hopefully we'll cook it up and uh, we'll have something to show you at the end of it. So stay tuned. Right, we're suited and booted, look. As uh, John was saying, this is for the female subscribers all throughout the land. There you go, something to look at. <laughs> Right, we just got out to, hold on, we do have to check for snots and everything, as John rightly points out. Uh, yeah, we just got out just to, well, John's going to unload his sack on here and show you what he's got, and then we're going to jump back in and see if I can rep the north a little bit better than I'm doing. What you got? I'd love to take any opportunity to unload my sack. <laughs> I had, uh, we've only got one bag, and I think that lobster, the eight has, it's been smashing them up. That's one that the lobster's been oh, smashing up. That's what you don't want. Well, he's done us a favour there in a way, hasn't he? He's de shelled it a little bit. There we are. Put you this. And uh, I know everyone who watches your channel will know this, but for the for the wild camping and bushcrafting lot that don't actually know, can you just talk us through what these are? These are a razor clam. And what they do is they live in the sand. I've um, I don't know if you managed to get on your GoPro, I got some on mine. Oh, Try to yeah. show the top of it. And what it is, is they live in the sand and there's just like, they've got a little siphon that comes out of the top of there. It's maybe like a couple of inches long. And it sits just underneath the sand like that and you'll just see the top of it. Yeah. And like you'll know yourself, you've tried to get a couple of them out. You have to dive down and you have to get hold of them really tight because they've got a strong foot Well, you can see it sticking it out there, look. That piece there is probably about that long. And that's what it sucks into the sand with. As soon as you get hold of them, or as soon as they feel anything, they'll try and get back under the sand. And just like that, they'll be one foot under. Yeah, I kept grabbing them just with tips of my fingers, and they're just gone like that. Yeah, if you don't get them, they're just eyebrows. Yeah. Can you get? Can you see your cell on there, mate? So you can do it to. You got yes, man. Checking for snot. There we go. The number of times you go out at water and take your mask off, and you just got lines of bogies <laughs> all over your face. That's not what we need for our twelve female subscribers from you know, our channel. Just got a nose stuck, all it netting and kind of more trouble getting out at bag than did from getting under at rock. So could you eat these raw then? I, I don't recommend eating anything collected raw. Right. It's solely because generally there is a rule of thumb being that filter feeding shellfish you don't eat any of them in a month without an hour. And that's just because they get an algal bloom. Right. And there's, a, there's toxic algae. There's no toxic seaweeds. So technically all seaweeds are edible. All seaweeds are edible. But Good to know. Algies, yeah, there are some. There are some ones that'll make you sick. Look at this Yo little lass, she's got her uh, prickly old head stuck in net. 
I want to avoid getting nipped. I don't want to get nipped. No, one, no I'm on camera. <laughs> We've come this far. Now, for folks who watch my channel, I harp on about this all the time. But you'll know yourself. Whenever you're collecting things like shellfish, there are minimum landing sizes. Minimum landing size in your area might be different. I know up at North East it's 87 millimetres. So it's yeah. 87 millimetres from the back of the eye to the back of the Down here it's 90 mil. Oh, is it? This is over 100. Tell by looking at it. Beast. And you can tell the difference between a male and a female. This is a female. Generally by the width of the tail. A male's tail will go like that. A female's tail will go like that. It's broader, it's flared. Right. You can see on top of the how it's flared. That's because when she's got eggs, she holds them all under there. Yeah, and you're not allowed to take it if it's got about eggs on it. So. There are three bylaws really with lobsters. One of them is the minimum landing size. This is big enough. Another one is if it's carrying eggs under here, call it a buried hen, a buried lobster. You aren't allowed to land it if it's carrying eggs. And also, there is a V-notching scheme where a V is cut into either this one or this one. That marks it as a breeding lobster. You aren't allowed to land it. Right. So this one, she's had three chances. <laughs> I'm going, afraid. She's going in the pot. I'm afraid she's going in the pot. Look, a little barnacle on her as well. She's just starting to get a bit. Yeah. Now let's not get too friendly with her because she's. These, uh, if you might, well, yeah, you've spotted there's a barnacle there. But this white worm here, you might see it on rocks and other things. They're called keel worms. It's just a little parasitic worm that creates a calcium shell around itself. Will that do any harm to lobsters just hanging out? Or? And when she sheds her shell, she'll lose it. Yeah. Now, you might notice the claws, two different types of claws. It's got one big one and one little fast one. It's got a crunching claw and a cutting claw. And what it'll do is it'll be sat in its own and if someone comes past, it'll get hold of it with this big one, kill it, crunch it, come in with a little serrated one and cut it up. Oh, so if you had to choose and you had to choose which one to get your finger caught in, which one you're choosing? I don't know, that would probably break it, but that might cut it off. <laughs> there's no real win in, there's no win. No way. And you can see these, that's how they feed themselves. Oh, these little, little claws legs. on there as well, yeah. So like we Beautiful were talking about colours. earlier on, if you get rid of one and it sheds its claws like you sometimes do, yeah. they can still feed themselves because they've got these. There you go, for the people who complained when that, when that happened to me, they can still feed themselves and the claws will grow back eventually. You will, um, if you come over to my channel, you'll see quite a few of our crab potting videos. We've caught lobsters with one claw, no claws, and they're still perfectly healthy. And all they do is when they shed their shell, they just grow two new claws back. Right, let's let's drop this gnarly little beast off, and we'll get back in the soup. See if I can get up, stop blanking for Yorkshire. Right, we're back from our second run and we're being honest here that fatigue has kicked in, we're about, we're about effed aren't we? Uh, we returned it just right, we got here just before low water. Yeah. We went up one side and then uh, you, can, you can tell that the tide's turned out. Yeah, it's how long were we in there for? Yeah, Did about we four think? hours was it? Yeah, <laughs> about four hours in the suit, my tongue has, it's felt, it's seen better days. And then I got a good shot straight behind the eye brained it and this is my first ever trigger fish and apparently they're good eating so there this, you go this spike here it is when it'll go down it is retractable and it's locked itself in there oh, it's so locked yeah it got me that what they do is they go inside of a rock like a crevice and put this up and lock themselves in there because look that bones <laughs> they get you there spike you oh. <laughs> right there you go then i didn't blank there you go, that's Yorkshire 1, Cornwall 1, it's a draw so far. There we are, look at that for a little... <laughs> razor clam, so... Brilliant, first time catching them, first time catching a trigger fish, lobster I'm familiar with, but that's brilliant. <laughs> That's a right little treat. As I say, we've been in the sea for four hours. My face is... Ugh. 
hurting, really thirsty. It's a long time to be in the in the sea. Um, but just buzzing, man. Just buzzing to come out with John. It was real kind of him to uh, to meet up with me and, and show me some of his spots and that. I've had a mint day. I love it out there. Uh, the visibility was pretty non-existent, really. It was pretty bad, but... I mean, we managed. And uh, for me, from being up north, that visibility was fine. I can handle that, but I know that it, it does get a lot better here. And I'm going to stay here for a good few more days uh, around this coastline and hopefully the, visibi hopefully the visibility will clear up and I'll get to show you some of the wildlife and stuff as well. Uh, John's just gone to get some stuff. I think we're going to go and cook these up. Where are they? There they are. Yeah, I think we're going to go and cook them up somewhere or at least have a little bit of a feed. <laughs> yeah. Right, here we go. I'm normally uh, organising stuff, but because I'm, because I'm with John, nah, it's my fault, I guess. This look, I've sort of got myself stranded down here, so we're having to use this fancy pulley system of a rope attached to our stuff. And I'm filming it just in case something goes horrifically wrong. It's working. And then stay tuned for having to get me round under armpits and oiled up there. Yeah, well. We got out of the water. I don't know if you can see him down there. We got out of the water, got all the gear sorted, got changed. And I says, I tell you what, I'll run up the hill, go and get one of the cars, and I'll come down, we can pick up all the gear. Anyway, the time it's taken for me to leave, get off the rocks, and get back down here, the tide's coming. I lower a rope down, got all the gear, and he's gonna have to take his trousers off. But yes. It's a bit like Murphy's Law, apart from it's called the Haze Effect. Go on, lad, you can do it. Hey, don't slip over now. Don't slip over now. Hey Paul, you've forgotten some it. You're gonna have to go back, you've forgotten some. <laughs> now he's unwinding you up. I'm gonna test it out, mate, yeah. Right, here we are. John's led us into this cul de sac. Because he, he. His Swedish torch fell off top of his van. It's a long story, but here we are, having to cross this little bit of water, me with camera and all that. I'm just waiting to see if, uh... oh mate, I'll stack it in there, I know I will, I know I'll stack it, look at that, no mate, I can't do it, I can't do this, it's too much John, I moved down here representing the North, <laughs> oh he's done mate, he's done me there with Northern, oh. right, yeah he's right isn't he, representing North, he's from North as well you, Ah, right, oh, let's go and let's go and get wet. I'm going, I'm filming, but I'm going. Right, here we go. Here we go. Repping north. If I go over, mate, this is it. Got drone it bag. Got camera in hand. <laughs> let's have it. Let's have you. It feels slippy. It does feel a bit slippy, like. It does. You like. <gasps> Shit. Here I go, look you. Hey, up there. Here he comes, look to rescue, look. I don't need rescuing like some sort of... Oh, sorry to all me whips. I've not come to carry you, I've come to laugh at you. Oh. <laughs> well, here I am to be laughed at. It's just, it, it's on a slip, ain't it? Where's all the barnacles when you need them? Don't you, don't you be trying to help me. No. You I've got this, no. You get away from me, you. Look how I've, they call me the limpet, the Yorkshire limpet. I'm, fu I'm stuck on this rock now with these feet, man. <laughs> Quite refreshing, actually. If I don't fall, this will be good, good content. <laughs> if I do fall, there's tears. <laughs> how deep does it get? You've been through the feet as well. Have I? Oh, oh, that's the junk dunk. And it's nice as well, isn't it, down here, look. 
There we are, look. Just a bit of adventure. I didn't stack it. Please don't stack it right at end. <gasps> yes. I'm happy about that, mate. <sighs> oh. <laughs> there you go. The Yorkshire Limpet strikes again, look. The Yorkshire Welk. Piece of piss. That was quite uh, adventurous, I like it. I like it now that I didn't fall in. <laughs> yeah, this is June. June in the new calendar coming soon, look. For both men, women, not just <laughs> men, women, and animals. Come get some. Just a little bit of rock samphire to go in with the razor clams. What's it like? Is it real hard? Yeah. Just all your money to get the shavings off like that without digging too deep. So well, it's just all angle. See where it's where it's darker. That's where it's more. Oh, I see. Where it's stiffer, yeah. and then you can. You get some of that gear. Oh, I just... That, that's oh, it has got a hell of a lot of... That takes a spark. Got a hell of a lot of oh, room. Well, it's a certain time. Well, it's just because they're soft. It's... Well, it is, essentially, yeah. Well, I like that about wood. I've got some oak logs in the garage, and every time, every single time I split one of them, I have to have a good sniff. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Let's see. So, two thumbs, eh? Yeah, nice and slow, yeah. John's going to do the lobster and I'm going to do the razor clams on me billy can and on the bush box. And to do it I'm just going to chuck a little bit of chopped up garlic, a little bit of chopped up onion, a uh, bit of salt, maybe some spicy toms, I don't know. I don't want to ruin the flavour because it's something that I've not eaten that much of so I would really like to just see what the flavour's all about really. Not too much, just a little bit. There we go, look at it. Little, makes your own little garlic press. There you go, skinned, ready to go. It's a lot of garlic. I'd just like to apologise to uh, John's lovely wife for sending him home. Stinking of garlic. So that's what's happening here. Get it all smashed up. Oh, yeah. it smells lovely, and then that'll go in there. Into the pan with that. I don't think I'm gonna. A bit of salt. A bit of Himalayan sea salt, and that'll do us. Right, so I'm just going to fry this up. John is uh, like an absolute hero, brought some butter, so I'm going to fry off this garlic and onion in a bit of butter first, just to bring out the flavours, sweat it down a little bit, and, uh, and then add a bit of water, and then we'll get these babies steamed up. I don't think we talked about them when we were getting them. 
Well, I thought I know we didn't. I know we didn't, and I am by no means the expert. I'm winging it, as anyone who knows me knows. I'm just winging this life. But speaking of experts, this is this is your man. So just talk us through the anatomy, what you can eat, what's the best bits of it, why does it look just, so I'm much just, like a tin dot dog? Yeah, I'm just blown away by how much of an expert you think I am. <laughs> well, kind of oversold it. Come on, thing, you, yeah, you've got a back catalogue that proves you're an expert. Go check it out, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get already you on. said pretty much. It's, this is a razor clam. The Americans, they have razor clams, but they look completely different to this. It lives in a burrow in the sand. So what you'll generally always see is you'll only see the very, very top of it sticking out. It's usually a little tiny depression with a little Ooh. number eight shape. You might find the shells on the beach. Generally, if you're going to be looking for an area that's got razor clams, that is an ideal telltale tell sign. If you find them on the high tide line. These are a good size to take. I will only ever take them if they'll be like that big and more. Because they are quite slow growing. John, is there a legal size to, to these things? There is. That's a genuine question. You, I want just doing that. I could do. The easiest way to tell you would be to say, check with your local IFCA, because the minimum landing sizes for so many things are different with areas. Yeah. It will have some sand in it. You can purge these for a couple of days in, in clean salt water, but we haven't got time or the patience. And we want to get amongst it. We want to get amongst it. Speaking of getting amongst it, lads, look at what you think of my new mullet. Yeah, look. You see how this one's opened all the way up? There's a bit of sand in there. That's all we'll just have to contend with. We can give him a rinse. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that looks like, I'll let you figure it out. It's very, time. very phallic, isn't it? Isn't it? So it's like a bit of a knob. Or... No. Looks like a knob! It does look like a knob. There's some weight in them, there's some meat in them. There's some meat in her. Right, we'll just pop them in, hopefully. They're going to be too big. They're trying to be too big. <laughs> it, it, this is, well, welcome to, this is my contribution anyway. This is the, what we've, John's lovingly named it, the haze effect where unfortunately things just seem to go wrong. Well, at least you know that it's genuine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If things go wrong, you know it's genuine. Yeah, we're not messing about. So there they are, in there. Put that there like that, summer. Summer, innit? It's summer rather than now. And if it was a survival situation, you might do what you've got. Right, I've chucked me, um, me rock samphire in there, which is it's got quite a citrusy little vibe to it, and uh, that'll help flavour them, and we can eat that as well. Right, the uh, clams have all fallen off the shell, so they're done. As far as I'm concerned, they're good to go. It smells lovely. And have a little try at one of these phallic mutants. Get all this gubbins off, all sand off. No easy comment box. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, are you gonna are you gonna buy me a drink first? <laughs> That's what you're thinking. Let's go in. Oh yeah. Seagulls have them. Seagulls are after it. Tell you what. That's nice. That, mm. What's that like? Reminds me of summer. It's got a little bit of a taste of a crab's leg to it. Texture I've found is a bit like calamari. Yeah. Yeah, a bit like squid. That's nice. Mmm. Mmm. Lovely. And some of this rock samphire. That's lovely. Yeah, get in here. Come on. Come on. I used used all of my bushcrafting skills to uh, <laughs> whittle myself a stick. <laughs> He's learning. I learned from the best, mate. Well, from the best. He said, "I'm best there." Look. That's a fine. Uh, you'll, you'll see with these. That this area here, like the dark part, that's a stomach full of all that well, sand and bits that it's been eating. You're not after eating that. No. Look at that money shot. Get rid of it. I put that in there if it's stock. All oh, right, crab legs. It's a bit like crab legs, isn't it? Yeah. Delicious though, like moule marinier with garlic and onion. Have a bit of that as well. A bit of green stuff. 
Only a five with you. There you go. It's better when it's been steamed like that. Mm. I've had it before and it's been a little bit overpowering. It's got like a... It just takes the flavour out of it a bit, doesn't it, yeah? When you break it, when it's fresh. It's See. like pine, isn't it? It's, mm. Sometimes it can be a little bit like turpentine when you... Yeah, yeah, real citrusy. Oh, you done good. Your catch. Catch and cook. Yes. Cooking a lobster this way, incredibly simple. You don't need to overcomplicate it at all. We have, literally, we've got our clean seawater. You can see there it's at like a full rolling boil, a fierce boil. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the lobster and put it into the pan. The water will drop, the water will drop off the boil. That's because the lobster will lower the temperature of the water. When the water comes back up to a rolling boil again, give it two more minutes after that and it's ready to come off. That's it. So it's a full rolling boil, lobster in. When it comes to a rolling boil again, two more minutes after that and it's out. Ideal. Now, if you and that's no matter what the size, it just that's no, it. No, because a bigger lobster it takes longer to get back to the rolling boil. There you go. So it cooks for longer. And that's science, I think, isn't it? It works for crabs, it works for lobster, it works for any, any type of crustacean yeah. shellfish okay if you're doing this at home what i would recommend you do is fill like a sink up full of cold water and put some ice cubes in and as soon as you've finished cooking it take it straight out and put it into an ice bath its shell will retain quite a bit of heat so it will continue to keep cooking unless you cool it down now we're not we're not going to do that here we're just going to take it straight out and get it cracked and eat it yes if you leave it for too long and you don't cool it down it just overcooks and it becomes really rubbery Right, got... excellent mate. Let's uh let's see you going in. You see it's dropped right off the boil now because the lobster's cooled down the water. Yeah. And as it heats back up again it'll cook. Right. That's it, it's extra two minutes now. All I've got in here is I've just got a little glass jar with some butter in it. I'm just going to melt some butter off. Yeah, it's ready to go. Look at that. Beautiful looking thing, look at it. Let's get stuck in. Let's get stuck in. And what you what do you say doing with butter? Just li warm just, it butter through, yeah. so we can just just literally sitting in a little bit of water. So we'll have some melted butter to dip it in. <laughs> do you want to do the honours or? Oh, me mate, you do honours. Well, I'll tell you what, do it like a chicken leg. I'm do it like hold on. <sighs> do it like a wishbone, shall we? Here we go. Look. Oh, I wish it was a little bit taller. Right. Oh no mate, yeah, you have that one. Because I had all them plans. You have a bigger one. <laughs> There's plenty enough to go wrong. No, come on. No, you do it. I, no, insi you do it. <laughs> I insist. Come on. There it is. Right, I just check a knocking rock. Find somewhere hard. Give it a good. Oh, look at this, he's spoiling me, look. Let's have a go, in butter. Lobster in melted butter. <laughs> yes. And a hard fought, a hard fought lobster that John wrestled yeah, out. I was just gonna say, you did really well getting it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get it out of there? Is it on film or? No, no. On the um, mm. on the film, I was raking about in all these rocks. I just I found an edible crab and I couldn't get it out, and I was feeling a little bit despondent. <laughs> I thought I was letting me. I thought it, I was letting the side down. To yeah, flag flag for Cornwall, didn't you? And I'd uh, diving it down amongst all these rocks, and just saw like just saw a single one of these antennas poking out. I thought I know what that is. Dived down there and found it, and it was underneath a massive rock. But there was holes on a couple of sides. 
So I raked out all the little stones, got my lobstering hook, went down under one side and waggled it about. So it turned round to face it, and then all I did was I went round the opposite side of the rock, put my hand underneath and got hold of its tail. <laughs> and the rest? Because I needed both hands, I couldn't show you in the video. Well, if it's a toss up between filming it and getting fodder, then it's. Well, that was, that was it. I'd done a video recently where I was videoing me getting a lobster out and another lobster come out and collared me. So I thought I'm not going to make that mistake twice. Yeah. You can't eat a GoPro. Look at that for a chunk of meat dripping in butter. Oh. That is despicable. I've never had it with melted butter. That's unreal. I was just going to say, you do something with yabbies, don't you? You get rolled at tail and churn it and pull it out. It doesn't work with lobsters. No. Well, I don't know how you do yours. I mean, this is the easiest way I've found. Female lobsters, which this one is, you will see that inside of them, they have this red there. Ooh. Like a little tomato. Well done, though. Call it the tamale. And you can either eat it now, or if you dried it at home, or wherever, you can use it as like a sprinkling to go into your into your hollandaise sauce or into your seafood sauce. Got a real nice taste to it. <laughs> I didn't know that. And is it just the females? Yeah, it's, it's undeveloped eggs. Is it? If you look at them, they won't all have it in there, no? No, if you look at them, you see, look, it's just... Undeveloped eggs, I'm going to eat it now. Yeah. Right, with the lobster... Got a weird all texture. I've done is just... I don't know if you saw me break the end of the tail fan off. You've got your shell, give it one of these, and then open it out, flat, give it one of them, and it just comes straight off. Out. The second part, you will know about this, well, I'll mention it. Yeah. If you get hold of these two bits, there is an intestine line inside this tail. If you pull the top off like that... Pretty clean. Yeah, it runs down the inside of there. But there is more of that to my leg. I love it! <laughs> Do you not like it? It's a bit rough. It's a weird texture to it, it's almost grainy, isn't it? Wait, it's, it's just like caviar. Lobster caviar dipped in butter, you what? There is that intestine line that I was talking about. Ah, where is that? Right. Where's your... Which piece do you want? Yep, biggest piece. You'll get biggest, lad. That's one thing that's um, possibly somewhat for parents. Is when you've got two, <laughs> two young'uns all what my gran used to do it if we had one cake one of us had to cut it in half and the other and the other chooses there you go so you always made sure that it was a perfect half didn't you oh look at these let them get dripping in butter look at that how was that oh man that did not go to waste oh cheers mmm <laughs> After how long we're in the sea, this is a perfect reward for having day we've had. Four hours in that. Oh. I was going to say another perfect thing about these type of stoves, like you say, I was all cooked on. But with other things like a disposable barbecue or like your bush box, you call it bush box. Mm. the best thing with this is, is once you finish with it, you can literally... Don't retain its heat, does it, like that thing? No, not like the rest of it. Yeah. You could take that and chuck it in sea to cool it off, or chuck it on your bonfire, or whatever you want to do with it. Perfect. I'll put a link to your other channel actually below this video, so that you can have, you can all go and have a look how you make this sort of stuff. It's Definitely worth a, uh, it's worth a watch. Very, very, very simple. Yeah, that's the Fish Locker Workshop. The Fish Locker Workshop. But do go check out his main channel first, because that is the back catalogue is ridiculous if you're into this sort of stuff. And fishing, mainly, isn't it? I was just about to say that all of this shell, what we'll do is we'll take it down into one of the rock pools, put it under some of the rocks. That way, if there's any other little bits of like little bits of meat that we've missed, the crabs, the blennies, the gobies, 
they'll pick it all clean. So absolutely nothing went to waste. All back into ecosystem. Love it, mate. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Well. Shit, it should have been one of them. Oi! Nice one. Covered in butter and lobster juice. <laughs> That's how we like to roll. Let's go and wash hands off. And there you go, that's out, and we'll just put it back into this, put it back into these woodlands just to rot and go back to nature. I mean, there wasn't that much of a trace to leave, but obviously we've left nothing. Everything's been put away and left exactly how we found it. Come here. I don't know if you can hear me over the sound at waves and that, but just wrapping this up now. Uh, John's going to take me out tomorrow. I think we're going out on the road. Oh, bollocks! <laughs> right, let's do this quick. Uh, I've had a mint day. It's been... Uh, thanks to John for having me down and taking me out and showing me what he's all about. It's been absolutely mint. Uh, please do go follow the Fish Locker and his other channel. The Fish Locker Workshop. Get in here! And the Fish Locker Workshop. All links for that will be below. And that's it. Covid elbow. Fade to black. See you later.